but fiscal. And yeah, but you reported earnings this week. That's true. That's true. And I don't know if the people didn't see, but your chat was popping off a little bit. It was a yeah, little, yeah. Little I did a Cash Bookings live. Yeah, I did yeah. um, <laughs> I did a live on my uh, regular channel, and I got close to a hundred concurrent live viewers on that thing and it went for three hours before it started to like really drop off so yeah there's a lot of interest from retail investors in mpw you could say we're starting a cult here on the channel guys we're starting a cult yeah. but could you recap the earnings for some people who sure. rather any sure. any any of the big highlights the big bulletin yeah the big people. highlights well so for the for like everybody that slid in there for like just a minute to check in they did not say definitively what the future of the dividend was during the quarterly earnings the dividend like the the board meets every so often and votes and declares the dividend or doesn't right um so they didn't reveal that on the earnings they said and i'll quote ed aldeg the policy remains unchanged so for whatever that means <laughs> um <laughs> so it seemed like they were soft confirming that the dividends probably going to be a go for the next quarter, but they didn't, I don't think they wanted to say 100% one way or the other, because they've got a lot of irons in the fire right now and anything could happen in the next few weeks. Um, with their largest tenant steward healthcare, um, they're working with stewards, other asset based lenders to, uh, basically get them through the process of, it seems like transferring some hospitals in Massachusetts, potentially to some other operators. Um, the government in Massachusetts wants it. Turns out Stewart actually had asked them last year about, you know, transferring some hospitals out of their name. And they, um, I don't know, they didn't get back. They, they weren't interested in engaging in that conversation until recently. And regulators, unfortunately, have to be involved in a lot of that type of thing because, you know, hospitals are very heavily regulated. I know, shocker. Yeah. Uh, imagine that government red tape and regulation getting in the way of efficiency. It's but Ron's um, fault, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, probably. But anyways, so there's kind of like a plan with Stewart, and any other support or whatever is going to be tied to um, milestones that they have to achieve. Uh, MPW is getting regular cash flow statements directly from Stewart um, to make sure that they're on track and everything like that. So, yeah, it's possible Steward goes bankrupt, but if they do, I still don't think MPW does because those hospitals will need to be switched to other operators because literally the places where they are cannot afford to have them close. The other hospitals will be overwhelmed. It will be an absolute disaster. So, um, hmm. and uh, they also switched. Uh, steward and uh, prospect, which was the other one that was behind on rent last year, they switched them to cash basis accounting. So now when they release earnings, it will be very clear if they actually got the cash rent or not. Because on accrual accounting, it's like they can recognize the income without actually having gotten the cash. And that makes it look not transparent. Like that was a big criticism they got last year. And I think They've heard the message loud and clear, and I think they've done a lot towards the whole transparency thing. Uh, I kind of wish um, I kind of wish Jordan was on here with us to see what his opinion is on if the transparency stuff has gotten better as of late. Um, Nobody likes people who aren't transparent. That's all I'm yeah. going to say. Yeah. But uh, other things they're working on uh, liquidity. So they're looking at. So a lot of their debt is actually unsecured. So they're looking at taking out secured debt and possibly selling assets like a mixture of both in order to uh, they have a lot of debt maturing next year in 2025. And they want to get ahead of that and have enough liquidity to pay off those maturities. Secured debt at this point in time is more practical than unsecured because of the difference in interest rates. Um, interest rates will be higher on unsecured debt and they don't view that as a realistic thing to refinance unsecured debt right now. Uh, they said they're pretty confident in uh, Steward being able to resume full cash rent payments by June, according to this plan that they're on. 
So that's that's going to be interesting to see if that plays out. I think if that plays out, we could see some big movement. Also, they did not give full year guidance because of how many things are going on right now. Like who knows which things they're going to sell specifically because they have a lot of interest in different um, assets and it's not clear which deals they're going to, you know, which deals are going to go through because like, they're in early stage talks on a lot of it. So they don't want to give full year guidance on what they expect revenue or earnings or uh, funds from operations to be, mm -hmm. which is understandable. But um, basically it was sort of, I would call it a mixed earnings, right? So I think that's why, because it really, it wasn't bad. So the stock price didn't like really crash, but it like wasn't like, all right, everything's perfect and, and great. So obviously that's why the stock price didn't jump. It kind of stayed the same. It went up a little bit. Yeah, I think. 5%. Yeah. But, you know, it kind of, it didn't really just go absolutely bananas in either direction because I think they still left quite a few question marks. And I think people are sort of waiting to see how certain things go before they either push their chips in or fold. <laughs> the, the MPW saga is like a one big giant blackjack game. And if I'll go to plan, <laughs> you're hoping for 21. Uh, I don't I don't view it that way. Uncle Cody comes in.